Hello, everybody. It's Ayla. I tweet over at A Purposeful Wife. You can follow me there on Twitter. Give me a thumbs up if you like my videos. And leave me a comment. I'd love to hear back from you. I wanted to make a video today about dieting. And particularly because I was watching um, Steven Crowder's video last night about going to a feminist, um, he went to like a feminist convention of sorts. And so much of what they were talking about, he was showing the literature from it. And a lot of it, of course, was intersectionality and, and about being fat. It was about fat shaming, fat acceptance, and this has become a huge, huge dominant narrative within feminism and progressivism. And I wanted to address that issue in a positive way to say that, look, I understand that a lot of times in our society, people honestly don't understand why they're fat. Here in America, we have an overabundance of food and calories, and people really, honestly, some will try to lose weight. They will put in hard work for a while. They don't see the weight come off, or they see it come off but come right back on. They become very disenchanted. They feel hopeless. They feel like they can't lose the weight. This is for men and for women. And then they just decide to put their energy into something else and say, well, now the world should just accept me as fat and not only accept me, but find me attractive and pay my medical bills. And so this, this I think, comes from not from a place of necessarily wanting to be um, against beauty norms or against cultural norms. I think it comes from a place of years of frustration that the diet industry has lied to women to make money through fad dieting. And when they don't lose the weight and when they have a fat mom and a fat sister and they're fat as well and you know their people in their neighborhood are fat and people in their community are fat they just decide well fat just must be normal and it isn't and they don't understand why so I wanted to talk about my diet secrets I struggled with my weight since I was a little girl not to a huge um, amount I was always that girl who had that extra 10 or 20 pounds I was never obese, thank goodness, but I always carried extra weight, particularly right after having a baby. I would tend to gain a lot of weight during my pregnancies, and then my first couple of pregnancies when I was younger, it came off pretty quick, but as I got older, my, my last couple of pregnancies, it just, those last 10 and 20 pounds weren't budging. And I was the type, I was a foodie, I was a liberal for a long period of time, so I tried everything. I was a vegan for 10 years was a vegetarian for almost 20. I went vegetarian when I was 12. Um, and I tried low-carb diet, paleo diet, primal diet. I tried numerous juice cleanses, juice fasts, the lemon water and maple syrup diet, the 17-day diet, the South Beach diet, the nursing mom's diet. I tried them all. And what I always found is I think what most people come across is that at first on a fad diet, you think it's working because you lose weight. Overwhelmingly, most people are going to lose about 10 pounds, five, at least five to 10 pounds right off the bat. And you, so you think that the diet works, but then you'll notice that you put that weight back on over time, over the next couple weeks or a month, you put the weight back on, and then sometimes you'll even gain additional weight. And here's the problem is because fad dieting is based on this idea that as long as you're eating the right food, you can eat as much food as you want. And if you want to be a healthy weight, and if you want to be healthy, you cannot overeat, period, end of discussion. You simply cannot. Under eating is always, you can look at the statistics on your own if you like, always healthier than overeating. And I'm not saying starving yourself, but I am saying a low calorie diet. And so how, the way that these fad diets work is that you end up skipping snacks and skipping toppings. When you go, let's say you go from a standard diet to a low carb diet, and then you're going to go, in, it's, you know, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, you want a snack, you go to your cupboard and you pick up, you go to get your favorite box of crackers or a bag of potato chips or even something healthy like carrots, um, but that's something that's hot, high in carbohydrates. Snacks tend to be high in carbohydrates. So you say, oh, well, I know I can't have that now because I'm doing low carb today. So 
because you haven't done the grocery shopping or all of it because you're not used to that diet and the other things that you can have on that diet for the first week or two you tend to skip snacks and you tend to skip toppings and because you because they don't go with the they're not low carb the subsequent weeks you substitute in things that are low carb so instead of going for the potato chips you go for the fried cheese and this is where you start to get into trouble because as your habits adjust to your new diet your calories come back on and so this is why fad diets look like they're working at first and don't work long term another reason is your body plateaus one of the biggest things that I recommend with dieting is to have breaks. You have to have breaks where you eat different amount of calories that day than you're used, you're used to eating. I recommend to have a break day or some people call it a cheat day or just a day where you would eat, you know, just eat more than you would on your diet or different foods than you would on your diet. You've got to have a cheat day at least one every one day out of every 10. This is what I recommend. And it cannot be a consistent schedule. So you cannot say my cheat day is every Saturday. My cheat day is every Friday night when my husband and I go out. Or my cheat day is Wednesday afternoons because that's when they bring donuts to the office. You can't have a consistent cheat day. Your body wants to hold on, particularly for those people that are holding on to 20 or 30 pounds, up to 50 extra pounds. Your body wants to hold on to that weight for, for famine. And it's going to really fight you hard on, on giving that up. And if you give it a regular supply of this is the food that I'm eating all the time, I'm eating this amount of calories, but on this consistent schedule I spike my calories, your metabolism will plateau, your body will plateau, it will get adjusted to that schedule and it'll keep that fat on you. What you have to do is surprise your body and constantly surprise your metabolism. So what I usually do is I'll pick a day, I'll kind of look at my schedule and I'll say, okay, my church is having a barbecue Wednesday night, so Wednesday I'm going to just, you know, that'll be a day I'm not count counting my calories. And I'll look ahead into my schedule and I'll say, okay, well next Friday my dad's coming into town, he's going to want to go out to lunch, so next Friday we'll, I'll also not count my calories that day. And so what I do is I just kind of maneuver it around inconsistent events not consistent events like I said but inconsistent events like a church picnic or a, a relative coming into town or a holiday holidays are great um, even though they're consistent on a yearly basis they're not on a weekly or even monthly basis consistent and so that's a great way that your body isn't going to adjust for Christmas or Thanksgiving for example so always make those a cheat day and you'll have more fun it also makes dieting way easier if you know like okay I'm restricting my calories for the next five days but then my dad's coming into town and we're gonna go to the buffet it's gonna be great you'll have a lot more fun with your food and you'll have a lot more success another thing is you'll find that once you've been on a restricted calorie diet your stomach shrinks and you simply cannot eat that much even when you want to binge and I found a couple of days ago I had an, a, a non calorie counting day I just ate whatever I wanted ate as much as I wanted, even over eight, kind of made my stomach hurt a couple of times. And then I went back and counted my calories for that day and I had eaten 2,000 calories, which is incredibly low. But that was as much as I possibly could actually fit in my body because my body had had adjusted my the way my stomach works. And so it's really brilliant. It's really brilliant. If you work with this system, it, it, it works really well. So I do a 1,400 calorie a day diet. And I'm a woman who has five children, I'm breastfeeding, and I'm in my 30s. So that's what I recommend for women in my position. For men, for women in different positions, you might want to go a little higher or a little lower. It also depends on your physical activity level. I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I'm pretty active, but not in a strenuous way. I garden, and that's about as strenuous as it gets. You know, I'm mostly just on my feet. Uh, doing laundry, cooking, that sort of thing. So that doesn't burn a whole lot of calories. Breastfeeding, however, does burn a lot of calories. It burns anywhere from two, three, up to 500 calories a day, depending on how much you're nursing. And my daughter's over one years old, so she's not nursing a ton anymore, but she does nurse probably about five times a day. So I'm still producing milk. So I'm probably burning at least two or 300 calories. So if you're a woman in your 30s, 
and you're not breastfeeding and you're not exercising, you might, you probably want to go lower than 1400. I would recommend something closer to 12. Okay. My, these are my big tips that make it, make it easy and get you on the right path. Small breakfast. You want to have a small breakfast. When I was in France, I was surprised how their cultural breakfast is usually like croissant and, and, and coffee. And so I don't recommend drinking coffee. I'm, I'm LDS, so um, I don't care if people drink coffee. Drink as much as you like. I'm just saying, I, I drink uh, like a Pero or one of those, or Roma or one of those, those coffee alternatives for us LDS people. You could also do herbal tea, you know, whatever. You know, um, if you want something like a glass of almond milk, that's really great. Almond milk is phenomenal especially for breakfast, low calorie breakfast. If you want to have cereal, you can do the almond milk, unsweetened almond milk. It has 30 calories for a cup. A regular cup of milk, even low fat milk, has about five times that much calories. So when you're making your, your coffee or your paro or your herbal tea, or you're having some cereal or whatever you're having, go with the almond milk. I know it doesn't taste as good, but go with the almond milk. Get yourself used to it. Um, but have have like a cup of coffee and a piece of toast, something small, very, very small. Have like a cup of cereal and a cup of almond milk. If you're able to, if you don't have blood sugar issues, if you're not a nursing mom or a pregnant mom, I highly recommend skipping breakfast. They've done study after study that shows skipping breakfast helps people lose tremendous amounts of weight. And when I was a teenager and I was super skinny, that that was my that was my tip that was my my thing that I learned really quickly that if that if I skipped breakfast I, I just lost like a ton, ton of weight really quick and it it's not always fun but I recommend it okay don't drink your calories absolutely let your calories be food. You want something to fill you up. That's going to make the diet easier so you're not hungry all the time. Don't drink your calories. Okay. Um, stay away from juice. Stay away from soda pop. Stay away from those things that are high. Milk. Don't drink those. Those are high calories. But do drink your snacks. Find your favorite extremely low or no calorie drink and drink those instead of having snacks, if you're able to. This is one thing, when I'm feeling really hungry, I'm feeling very hungry, dinner's still an hour away, I'll grab a Skinny Girl juice. These are my favorite. They're relatively healthy. There's not a lot of junk in them. They're zero calories. Well, some of them are zero calories, some are like 10 calories, but they're very, very low calorie. Um, Cascadia makes, makes a, a type. You can drink, a, if you really want a diet soda, you know, depend, I'll drink a diet soda every now and again for a treat, but I, I don't drink them regularly. I don't think they're very good for you, but you can drink a diet. You know, being fat for you, being fat is way more unhealthy than drinking a diet soda every now and again, especially to get yourself to lose weight those first couple of months. Just go ahead and have the diet soda, but I love the Skinny Girl. Um, I also love making like an, an iced coffee. What I'll do is I'll take my my fake, my, my Mormon fake coffee, my Pero, and I'll make it into an ice, an ice coffee with some stevia to sweeten it, zero calorie stevia. I'll put in something fun like a caramel flavor or something, a butterscotch flavor, and I'll put it with lots of ice. And that is, that really helps. Plus the drinking something cold will burn calories, which is kind of fun when you're drinking cold stuff. But I love the, the ice and then I, I munch on the ice when I'm done drinking the drink and it, it feels like a snack. It helps get me through that hour or two until lunch or dinner if I'm feeling really hungry. Okay, let me go to my next one. Okay, popcorn. When I'm very hungry and I absolutely need to have a snack, or maybe I'm planning a really big dinner, so I want to have a very low calorie lunch. Popcorn. I love air popped popcorn. You can have a whole bowl of this. Like I'm talking like a really giant bowl for like 200 calories. It's amazing, amazing stuff. Get the Jolly Time popcorn. It's non-GMO verified by the GMO project. Put it in your air popper. It takes 
three minutes to make absolutely will satisfy that crunchy craving you have to snack on something crunchy. Takes a long time to eat and the fiber in the popcorn's amazing. It's super filling, incredibly filling. Once you're used to being on a low calorie diet, you can have a bowl of popcorn. It will replace an entire meal for you in a day for only 200 calories. It's amazing stuff. Here's my a little bit of a plug for I can't believe it's not butter spray. I like to stay with health foods. I like to stick with health foods, but at the end of the day, if you're overweight, that's more unhealthy than having a little bit of a chemical thing, just like the diet soda. If the diet soda helps get you through in the, the first month or two of losing weight, please use it. It is better to drink the diet soda than be overweight. The I can't believe it's not butter is I feel the same way about this. I don't eat very much of this anymore, but when I first kind of put this diet philosophy together and finally lost those extra pounds, this got me through. I would put it on my popcorn, I'd put it on my toast. It would save me about 80 to 100 calories because you figure if you're using about a tablespoon of butter on your popcorn or your, your toast, it, this is going to save you 80 to 100 calories. And if you're doing that a couple times a day, that really, really adds up to a huge calorie savings. So you put a little, I can't believe it's not butter, you put some like some nice seasoned salt on a big bowl of popcorn, it feels decadent, it feels wonderful, it's like 200 calories, it's beautiful. Okay, snacking on vegetables and having lots of vegetables in your meals. No brainer, vegetables are extremely low in calories for the most part. It's really hard to overeat vegetables. So get used to the vegetables, throw them in there, be eating your salads, be experimenting with new vegetables, try new things, um, cook them, you know, put a little, I can't believe it's not butter spray and some salt on there. If you want to just steam them, put a little butter spray, some salt. If you're not used to eating a lot of raw vegetables, do it that way. However you want to do it, just do it. They're great. Great for snacks and great for keeping your meal calorie count down and filling you up. Measure your food, particularly when you're first starting out dieting, always measure your food. Just measure it by the cup, look at the calorie content, write down the calories, because you're going to want to keep track, especially at the beginning. I'm kind of to the point now where I kind of do it in my head, because I kind of know, I can kind of really closely guesstimate how many calories is in a serving of whatever I'm eating, and so I kind of just keep tally in my head all day. But when you're first starting out and you're not used to how much calories each thing has and what a serving size looks like for, for pasta or broccoli or cereal or whatever you're eating or cheese, um, measure it out. That really, really helps and it will keep you healthy even when you're not doing the measuring because you'll look at a spoonful and you'll be like, okay, I know that's half a cup. Watch your toppings. Watch your toppings incredibly closely. Cheese, olives, avocados, butter. These are going to add a lot of calories for not adding a lot of flavor. Find things that are flavorful. Like I love seasoned um, seasoned salts. There's, they've got so many out there now you, that you can choose from. And I love vegetables, really fl you know flavorful ones like peppers, mushrooms, onions, tomatoes. Find these to top your foods. Don't top your foods with high fats like the avocados, the butters, the cheeses, the olives. It's just useless calories. You'll be able to eat so much more and feel so you'll feel so full and so satisfied if you flavor with those lower calorie toppings. Or just even skip toppings. Skip toppings for a while. It's fine. We were in the car yesterday and my husband grabbed uh, had grabbed at the store some onion bagels and some cream cheese because we were kind of out and everybody had w was getting hungry and we were still about a 45 minute drive from home we were running errands and so he was putting some cream cheese he's in the front seat of the car i was driving he's putting some cream cheese on bagels and passing them around and he says you know do you want one and i said yeah i'll just take just a bagel though i don't you know don't put cream cheese on mine he's like oh that doesn't sound very good I'm like, no, but you know what? Um, that add, Putting that cream cheese is gonna add like 200 calories. It's gonna add 100 to 200 calories and that bagel is about two, 250. And so I don't wanna have 500 calories, 600 calories right now while I'm driving home, but I will have 250 calories. Like I can 
I can budget for that. That's fine. And, you know, it, it was fine. I wasn't missing out. Now, here's something that is very unpopular. It's very un non-PC right now. Low fat. Fats contain a lot of calories. They simply do. Your coconut oils, your olive oils, your healthy grass-fed butters, they contain high calories. Now, do they have health benefits? Some of them, yes, they do. Our bodies do need saturated fat, but we don't need it in high doses. I like to keep my saturated fats, I like to keep my butters and my good creams and things like that for my cheat days, for my off days. My off days, I will eat that. And I don't eat coconut oil, and I actually have a blog about that. If you go to my blog, which is wiseandgloriouspurpose.blogspot.com, type in coconut oil in the search, you'll find my article on coconut oil. I don't eat, personally, I don't eat coconut oil, and that will explain why. But at any rate, low fat because you you want to not even low fat you want to not you want to avoid the fats because they have a lot of calories and then you want to check the calorie content of your low fat things when i was first dieting i thought well i'll go with a low a low fat product because it's going to have less calories they usually don't for example i was looking at a serving size for some sour cream I love sour cream. It's one of my favorites. And I thought, well, if I get the low-fat sour cream, I bet, you know, it'll have less calories. The regular serving for the sour cream, the regular sour cream, full-fat sour cream was 150 calories a serving. The low-fat sour cream was 140. It was totally not worth giving up the flavor for the 10 calories. It just really wasn't for me. And so really what you have to do is skip the sour cream or save the sour cream for your cheat days or realize that if you have sour cream on your taco or your burrito or whatever you need to eat like half of what you would normally eat for that for that entire meal serving so just be ready to be hungry you're going to have to sacrifice hunger for that high fat because fats don't fill you up a tape a tablespoon of fat you know whether it's an oil a butter a sour cream it's going to contain about 100 calories. And when you're on a 1,400 calorie a day or less diet, that takes up a huge amount of, you know, you could have had half a bowl of popcorn for that, half of a giant bowl of popcorn for that. And the popcorn would have kept you full for a lot longer than that tablespoon of sour cream. Exercise, exercise is deceptive. Exercise to be healthy. Exercise for your cardiovascular health. Exercise to keep your blood pressure down exercise to tone, exercise to get rid of toxins, sweat out toxins. Do it for those reasons. Don't do it to lose weight. If you think you're going to exercise and then go about eating the regular way that you eat, you are not going to lose weight. Let me give you an example. If you did a nice, brisk, vigorous walk, and I'm talking like almost a run, really vigorous walk for about two miles, three miles, you're going to burn maybe two to 300 calories. That's a bowl of popcorn. The diet popcorn is about 200 calories for a big bowl. You're, you know, it's a, that's the equivalent. Even if you, let's say you worked out really hard, something um, intensely uh, strenuous, you've, like these people are doing here. You're jumping, you're sweating, your heart is pounding. Do that for a half hour. You'll be lucky if you've worked off a tuna sandwich really lucky. You probably haven't worked off enough calories to have like a whole wheat, low fat mayo tuna sandwich. So exercise for the right reasons. Exercise for your cardiovascular health, for toning, for body shape, for strength. Don't exercise to lose weight. It's not going to work. Okay, so that is my diatribe on dieting. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment in the comment box, and I will talk to you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.